The 42nd edition of the Tokyo Motor Show held every two years is the last major date on the car fair calendar. Just a couple of years ago, explains Matas Kurat, the Tokyo Motor Show wasn't such a big hit, with plenty of empty hall space. But a new exhibition complex appears to have successfully breathed new life into the event, with a lot of European luxury and mass car makers back in Japan to present their products. And of course, Audi is among them. The A1 Sportback is a kind of grown-up version of Audi's smallest car and is celebrating its world premiere in Tokyo. Four doors and a big trunk plus flashy contours lining the roof area. The latest addition to the family looks set to win over new customers, not just in Europe, but across the world. Imported cars are always something special for the Japanese, says CEO Rupert Stadler. And now Audi has found the right entry price for the Japanese compact car segment. The power is provided by three TFSI gasoline units and three TDIs with outputs ranging from 63 to 136 kilowatts. Some engines can be ordered with an optional fast-shifting 7-speed S-Tronic automatic transmission. The Audi A1 Sportback comes with inviting price tags as well. The gasoline version with the 1.2 TFSI engine will be available for just under 17,000 euros. Prices in Germany for the smallest diesel, the 1.6 TDI, begin at just over 19,000 euros. And there are also German offerings for visitors looking at the higher end of the market. The 911 is a real cold car in Japan, explains Porsche executive Wolfgang Hatz. For the Audi boss, Japan is one of the top ten car markets. And Daimler executive Joachim Schmidt reminds us that the Japanese market is still the third biggest in the world after the U.S. and China. Mercedes is presenting its technological flagship of the future, the F-125. Cutting-edge engineering, a hydrogen fuel cell synchronized communication systems, and an out-of-this-world design both inside and out. Say hello to the future. Our expert Matis has noticed that the Japanese are very prominent here when it comes to sustainable mobility. The Mitsubishi Intelligent Electric Vehicle, or Mi for short, has already been on the market for a couple of years, and here in Tokyo there's also a minibus version. Mitsubishi is confident of selling 4,000 units in the first quarter of 2012. The Pivo 3 isn't yet ready for commercial launch. Nissan's new concept car has electric motors on all four wheels and boasts a truly original steering setup. Not to be outdone on the innovation front, Volkswagen presents its cross coupe concept, a look ahead to the SUVs of tomorrow. VW's Passat Alltrack has evolved past the concept stage and is another car making its debut here. This version of the popular wagon features an off-road mode, making it ideal for both the urban jungle and rural terrain. There are over 20 world premieres here, and Matas has his eye on two stunners from Mazda. One is this compact SUV model, which is Mazda's attempt to break into the segment. It's been an area where Mazda has had some catching up to do. Mazda was a late arrival to the segment, but media spokesman Jochen Münzinger is confident about this very modern product. The car maker is also represented at the show by the futuristic looking Takiri. The mid range sedan concept comes with an array of safety features that make driving a more pleasant and altogether more comfortable experience. The Takiri gives us an idea what the new generation of the Mazda 6 will look like.
The Tokyo Motor Show used to be the undisputed car event supreme in the Asia region. It remains to be seen whether it will manage to reattain that status. The Chevrolet Camaro is a real American muscle car. It's been a mainstay on the U.S. market since 1966. General Motors introduced it as a challenger to Ford's extremely popular Mustang, and the Camaro quickly became an iconic sports car. Now in its fifth generation, the Camaro is finally hitting the streets of Europe. This year, says Stefan Raschik, they're celebrating both Chevrolet's 100th anniversary and the Camaro's 45th. For him, this underlines the car's importance for the Chevrolet brand. He believes the model they're now bringing out should ensure the car's future for another 45 years. But first, let's take a look back at the past. A comparison shows that the current design still retains the Camaro's very distinctive look. This yellow Camaro Bumblebee is a second-generation model from 1976. In addition to the chrome bumpers, its trademarks include sloping lines and the large wraparound rear window. The man from Chevrolet thinks the vehicle is targeted at those who like muscle cars. The Camaro has a V8 engine with over 400 horsepower, which he believes determines its clientele. Most people who've shown interest in the car say it's unbeatable as far as value for money goes. Rashik says no one else offers over 400 horsepower for under 40,000 euros. Lots of power at an affordable price. That's always been the Camaro selling point. Back in 1967, the first base model cost just under 2,500 US dollars. It didn't come with power steering, but it did have a robust 3.8 liter straight six cylinder engine with a three speed transmission and boasted 140 horsepower. The current model Camaro mixes tradition with modernity, as can be seen in the retro design dashboard. Here, various nods to the past are evident. Combined with a rather sober black interior, the sports seats makes a Chevy feel like a real race car. The Camaro is also available as a convertible. In the current version, the soft top folds away automatically at the push of a button, disappearing into a separate compartment behind the seats. This means drivers can still make full use of the 287 liters of trunk space. Our test convertible comes equipped with a six-speed automatic transmission. The American muscle car's engine delivers 405 horsepower, or 298 kilowatts, which helps it sprint from zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 5.6 seconds. The model can reach a top speed of 250 kilometers per hour. The Camaro's sporty chassis and 556 newton meters of torque make it fun for zipping along country roads. The roar of the engine is sure to set the hearts of sports car lovers racing, but it's not music to environmentalist ears, as this lean, mean driving machine guzzles 13.1 liters of Super Plus unleaded per 100 kilometers. Still, the European version has a special feature that is supposed to reduce fuel consumption. A Chevrolet goes with the time, says Stefan Raschik. It's optimizing the engine management, electronics, and engines in general. That goes for the Camaro, too. He says the automatic version features a component called active fuel management, which lets the car switch off as many as four of the engine's eight cylinders when they're not needed. This has a positive effect on gas mileage. The Camaro's xenon headlights, surrounded by halogen rings, give the impression of being a pair of deep-set eyes. 20-inch wheels help transfer the car's impressive power to the road. The V-shaped front lends the Camaro a dynamic look, while the hood's central power dome only adds to the car's aura of power. A 
Stefan Rashik says Chevrolet is a global brand and notes that after the U.S., the company has decided to introduce a version for Europe. The car has a special suspension, and there are certainly other countries where the Camaro would do well. Rashik imagines that in a market like Russia, in cities such as Moscow or St. Petersburg, the car would find many admirers. He thinks the Camaro has a good chance of conquering markets around the world. One thing's for sure, the Camaro is one of the most flamboyant models on the European market today. As you've already seen, Mazda's CX-5 is the car maker's first ever compact SUV. In Europe, it will be challenging the likes of the BMW X1 and VW Tiguan. So the engineers and designers of Mazda's R&D center in Germany were recruited for the new model. Prices for the CX-5 start in Germany at just under 23,500 euros. Alfa Romeo is introducing a super-efficient engine for the Mito. The 1.3-liter common rail turbo diesel delivers 62 kilowatts of power and an official fuel economy of 3.5 liters for 100 kilometers. Among the standard features is a start-stop system. The new environmentally friendlier model goes on sale in Germany for a little under 17,000 euros. Our man Sasha Knapp is driving the new Ford Focus station wagon. He wants to give it a spin on the open road. All you need to do is push a button to fire up the engine. Like its predecessor, the Focus is one of the sweetest handling station wagons that money can buy. But this new model now offers even more in the way of electronic safety gadgets. Sasha says Ford have pulled out all of the stops in the compact class, and the station wagon also has its fair share, parking assist and traffic sign recognition. That's just to name a few. The Focus now offers more driver aids than any other car on the market, if you're willing to pay for them. They monitor the blind spots, maintain a safe distance to the car in front, and apply the brakes to prevent accidents. The traffic sign recognition system uses a forward-mounted camera to scan for signs and displays them on the center console for the driver. And Ford's design team has even come up with an ingenious way to protect the car's paintwork. Sasha wants to show us Ford's latest gimmick, but it's so cutting edge, it's not even included in this test model. So to get a look, Sasha is going to take a trip down to the garage to see a car that is already fitted out with it. Ford's Wolfgang Bohm says everyone has damaged their paintwork after parking, so his team has developed a protection system for the doors that can deploy within 60 milliseconds to protect the paintwork. With it, chips and scratches are a thing of the past. The key is a simple mechanical system. It's been developed both for front and rear doors and will be fitted as standard to all Ford Focus titaniums from March of next year. It's annoying not to have it, but great when it's fitted and saves the doors from any kind of paintwork damage. But only damage to the trouble spots on the doors. The best protection for other areas of the car is still careful parking and safe driving. Our test car is fitted with the 1.6 turbo diesel unit. The 85 kilowatt engine consumes just 4.2 liters of fuel for 100 kilometers, but that's to be expected. In 2012, Ford is releasing a sporty ST version of the Focus, which delivers 185 kilowatts. It'll be joined by an electric powered model, which is good for 160 kilometers of motoring before you need to head to the nearest charging point. 
Sasha has been won over by the Focus station wagon, and now he's looking forward to getting behind the wheel of the ST and electric versions.